Hey, welcome to the Road and Morale podcast. So do you ever feel like screaming out in the office on Zoom or outside the school gates? For the love of God, come on, really? Then if this is you and you're looking for an honest, fun and frank podcast on life and business, then sit back and listen to me, Rona Morel. I'll be bringing great people on the show to talk, share and debate their life experiences and business challenges. Keeping the show unpolished, but in a fun and unique British style, with sarcasm, tenacity, maybe a few swear words or tears. This podcast keeps it real, honest, raw and removes the bullshit in the only way I know how, through authenticity and getting shit done. Think of it less like the Housewives of New York or TOWIE with the lipo and drama and more like the house lives of the real world. I hope you'll take something away to be better informed laugh, smile, or maybe even finally get in the confidence to shout, come on, really. So enjoy. Hi, Sunny. Welcome to the Rain and Morale podcast. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me here today. It's an honour to be here. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. And um, I'm delighted to have you um, today. Uh, we were just discussing there's a distinct difference between our clothing today. One is sitting in 32 degrees and one is sitting in the middle of a storm and about two degrees. <laughs> I think you can probably guess which one's which. Um, I'm delighted to have Sunny Fisher with me today. And the reason why I asked Sunny to come on board was I was kind of blown away by the work that he has been doing over the last, well, longer than a decade now as the founder of For Us. And really that passion and development was driven by financial inclusion and driving sustainable ecosystems and, and um, transparency etc and challenging our kind of conceptions and where the NGO model can be broken down but equally being proud to earn some money from from doing such a great initiative I'm sure he's going to touch on it but it does talk about tokenizations blockchain and things like that so it's a world for many people that they're trying to get their head around so thank you so much for coming um, on the show and Sunny over to you please tell me about your journey in developing for us and what it means for the future. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for us is exactly what it says, you know, it's for us. And uh, I started it 12 years ago to create a banking and play payment platform that was for us, for everybody, uh, for the 99%. And as I ex you know, always say to people, 99 is greater than one. So, uh, I thought, you know, if, if we can create a platform where we can take um, um, all of those people who've been excluded uh, and let them cooperate economically, we could create a platform that worked for us. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's, it was 12 years ago that I, I became interested in banking. Um, my background is in uh, IT. I'm an IT entrepreneur. I've listed a few companies on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange sold a few companies to listed groups and yeah, I've been in and out the business um, since I was about 12, uh, which is a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and um, um, you know, I, I, uh, I saw the opportunity to use technology to um, level the playing fields uh, in, in the world of finance. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw um, the potential of the emerging technologies uh, being, uh, this is 12 years ago, smartphones, QR codes, uh, blockchain, and, and cloud computing. And uh, I saw the potential um, to um, um, bring about the second part of uh, our father, Nelson Mandela, taught us, you know, there are two parts to the revolution. Mm -hmm. um, political freedom is just uh, one part of it. Without economic freedom, um, you know, we haven't achieved uh, the freedom of, of the people. Um, so for the last 12 years, I've been building a new set of rails with a new set of rules yeah. um, based on what I call the golden rule. Okay. Uh, the golden rule of business. And that is he who has the gold makes the rules. Mm -hmm. and, Unfortunately. Um, yeah. Well, well fortunately in your case. You know what? Um, it's fortunate if we can harness it, if we can have the gold. And um, I think that COVID um, and um, where the world's at and where we're sitting from a climate perspective, I think, yes, as Africans, we do have the gold. You do. You know, we've, got, we've got the food, we've got the sunshine, um, we've got the water, 
um, and we've got uh, the spirit of Ubuntu. Um, Africans and South Africans understand the power of collaboration. It's in uh, the culture, it's in the, the uh, Corsa culture where uh, Nelson Mandela comes from in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. And uh, people realize I am who I am through others. And um, what's needed around the world is a financial system that's based on that and not on greed. Yeah. Uh, because what's, what's happened is we're playing capitalism without capital. It's like playing, you know, soccer without a soccer ball. Yeah. Um, um, so um, what we've, we set about to do it for us is to, to change that, to create a platform where the rules apply fairly uh, and equitably. Um, and, you know, to, um, to say that the rules apply fairly and equitably needs to take into account the past um, uh, disadvantages and injustices. Yeah, you cannot you cannot have a, a Model T uh, a car um, racing on a track, you know, with uh, with a Porsche. Um, so um, one has to be realistic and, and have a mechanism to for it to actually work. And one has to be realistic about it without yeah. being condescending, patronizing and, um, you know, um, all, all the all the um, isms attached with any kind of uh, uh, you know, economic empowerment yeah. uh, or historical, um, you know, uh, uh, methods to try and resolve it. So this was an opportunity to fix all of that um, yeah. and to take the assets that we have as Africa and Africans in the diaspora and um, using blockchain technology and smartphones become an economic powerhouse, um, take our economic uh, power back and do it in such a way that is uh, transparent, sustainable, um, and good for the planet. And um, yeah, so that's that was the idea uh, way back 12 years ago. I often say to people, if I knew it was going to take 12 years, I would have packed some sandwiches. Um, I had no idea um, what would be involved to actually um, achieve um, yeah. what, what we set out to do. Because for us, it's an acronym. It stands for free, open, real-time, ubiquitous, and secure. So the okay. free was easy because um, with the, with the uh, technology at real scale, um, then um, you have a marginal, uh, a zero marginal cost. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we came up with a revenue model that didn't need transaction fees, where we um, make our money through uh, advertising in receipts and by providing working capital finance. Okay. So, um, what we've done is we've created a banking platform that doesn't charge transaction fees and a lending platform that doesn't charge interest. Um, okay, yeah. sounds too good and, to be true. You know, it's actually, um, it's not at all. It's going back to the old ways um, yeah. because we, we do make money. We take a percentage of revenue. So uh, instead of having a fixed monthly interest payment, we just take a, perc a percentage of, of the, the top line revenue. It's easy to collect and manage. Mm. And it doesn't put um, the, the borrower under any pressure um, to make a, a loan repayment. Right. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's ethical lending. It's Sharia compliant. So it's, uh, it's uh, halal from an Islamic uh, point of view. Amazing. Um, it's, uh, it's in teachings, you know, with, uh, uh, in line with the teachings of Christ. It's also, uh, you know, complies to the halakhic uh, Jewish principles of lending. Interest wow. um, is, is, uh, is not a given. Uh, interest is the reason why we're in such a mess. You know, you don't have to be a, a, a maths grad to work out that if some people are paying interest and other people are receiving it, you exactly. can make an inequality. Um, so, uh, can, if, if you don't mind me asking, how on, on the first point in terms of the technologies there, how are you enabled to ensure that everyone is? in terms of the community um, of access? Because not everyone has got a mobile phone or are you finding that that's less and less now? No, it's less and less. Um, and, and even if it's an issue, it's one that can be fairly easily overcome. Um, it's, it's cost effective to fund the cost of a phone in a community because right. of all of the cost savings and benefits. Um, forget about the lifestyle benefits. And, um, um, you know, in, in developing countries, telephony is a bit like, I would guess, um, having a, 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 a computer in, the, in a developed world. The, the, the utility of being able to send a WhatsApp or a, leave a Facebook Messenger message when you can't just jump into your car and sh go and visit people or 
where yeah. it, uh, ca uh, calling someone's expensive, it's almost you, uh, more important to have a, a smartphone when you're poor than it is when you're wealthy. So mm -hmm. there's so many utilities to it that today are essential in people's lives. What, what we need to do is we need to make that, um, it's, it's, it's not that the handset that's the problem, it's actually the, the cost of connectivity. Unfortunately, right. one of the other cartels, um, besides the banking cartel, or, you know, an environment where you buy a license, it's designed um, to drive the price up and um, yeah. look at competition. And uh, in the case of the mobile phones, they, they said it is because the, the phone operators have to invest billions in infrastructure. Um, the net result, yeah, yeah, um, we, you know, without getting into the nitty gritty, um, it's, we're taxing poor people for being poor. They pay more for everything. They pay more for, for, for internet access. Why are poor people paying more? Yeah. And, and similarly, I guess, even, even here in the UK at the moment, everyone's talking about this 5.7% inflation rate. Actually, the cost of the basic foods that we all buy as a stable, pastas, tin tomatoes, they haven't gone up 5%. They've gone up 124% and so on and so forth. So it's never really relative um, and, and you're always hit the hardest. Absolutely. And with COVID, um, you know, there's been the biggest uh, wealth transfer in history. So the wealthiest people um, are trillions of dollars um, better off. Uh, where did that money come from? Yeah, because there's now, there is now more, I read a stat yesterday, there are more billionaires now than ever before. And the growth of that in the last two years was exponential. So, but us as everyday people are sitting there going, hmm, okay. Well, well that's I, not I, us. Think that, I, I think that's it. Um, I think everyone's realized the emperor's got no clothes. Mm -hmm. um, the, the housing bubble was a, a big awakening, but um, there, there are plenty more bubbles to come. In the US, the, the student debt is, um, I think, $1.5 trillion, wow. which is the total size of the Russian economy. Um, for, for degrees um, to which there are no jobs, you know, um, the, in the US, they have the working poor, uh, people yeah. who are working a full, uh, you know, full hours and can't um, uh, afford to eat and pay rent. Yeah. A lot of homeless people are employed. The majority are employed. So, you know, these are the things that um, are, are bubbling under under the surface. in In South Africa, it's it bubbled over, mm. and when they stopped the COVID grant, they pay like um, uh, what's it about twenty pounds a month, yeah, to, to ten million people. When they stopped that. Uh, is when the riots happened and you can imagine where do people um 20 pounds is not a lot but it's a lot more than nothing I, and and, and for, for a lot of people same here we actually had a, a it was i think it was 20 pounds a week that then got stopped but 20 pounds is that is can and is the difference between eating and making other drastic choices no, absolutely. And so, so yeah, we, we set about um, putting the tools together to fix it. So we now oh. have 20, 20 million South Africans on grants, and we're going to turn them uh, from grant recipients on welfare with their hands out to shareholders in uh, a cooperative, uh, shareholders in their assets um, that, uh, you know, are their birthright. And so effectively, that's kind of like an intergenerational process so you, you that's the benefit then it will sleep down to the to the rest of the family yes um and it's actually the um the whole cooperative banking and the cooperative agricultural model is really what built south the south african economy um the there was uh, historically a, 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 a situation referred to as the poor whites problem where poor afrikaans uh, people had been squeezed out of uh, employment by the british it was job reservation. And mm -hmm. the way that they overcame that is they formed cooperatives, cooperative banks, co co cooperative agricultural um, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, processes, et cetera, and created some um, of the biggest industrial conglomerates. Mm -hmm. But then what happened was in uh, um, the post-apartheid era, that was all unwound and turned into companies with shareholders. Right, and the, the the cooperative banks were amalgamated and corporatized and listed, so now you have an outside shareholder who's got access to your wallet. Yeah, um, it doesn't work. They they cannot help themselves. Every every year they have to think of a new way to take your money, 
and um, uh, you know the temptation just they just can't help it. So that's yeah. what has to be cooperatively owned. You need to be in charge of your own money. And so, so sorry, I was going to say, and so knowing all of that and the complexity of of, of history lessons, it's a global issue. Hence, why it's probably taken you twelve years. Can you start to kind of chip away a little bit at why it's been so hard to get to where you are? Yes. Yeah, so the 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 you in for us the ubiquity it was the challenge because mm -hmm. it's a two sided market. You need to have a certain level of um, um, members on both sides uh, of that transaction for it to work. A good example uh, to think of is a fax machine. I don't know how the guy sold the first fax machines because who are you going to fax? Nobody else has got a fax machine, right? Yeah. So that was um, that was the trick: getting enough people to cooperate um, to to create a standard. And um, it was even more difficult than Steve Jobs, who had to get the music industry to cooperate with iTunes to save the industry. They were just greedy music executives. We've yeah. got bankers who um, just as greedy. Just it's not in the worst. It's not in their nature to cooperate. They, they, it took years for them to stop being suspicious of me. Like yeah. um, they, they did not realize that a win win wasn't uh, that they win twice. You know, um, they don't understand um, the concept um, of, of a win win sustainable um, a relationship. And that, that really got lost from finance. And it wasn't always the case. Yeah, and uh, it's got out of control the last while. This greed is good, and you know, um, profit at any any price and all that nonsense. So, yeah, we've, it's now caught up with us. The bull has arrived, and it's time to to you know um, take care yeah. of business. So, um, with the technology, uh, for us, we brought um, the 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 other uh, part was to get people to work together to create an environment. A, f a framework, uh, um, the organizational uh, relationships, do you go with an NGO, do you go with a trust? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I spent years of uh, research having a look at how best to do it to make sure that it could achieve the, the uh, objectives and also be sustainable beyond me and the other founders to create something that can't get corrupted um, and get taken over, you know, by somebody else. Because the key thing about this is we've made it a, um, a, a cooperative. It's a, a, a one right. person, one vote, one vote platform. Everybody's equal. Uh -huh. and, um, and we need to collaborate to set the, the rules and the boundaries. And, and it's not rules for banks because our platform is not just for banking. It's also for medical records and uh, uh, agricultural traceability right. and carbon, carbon footprint um, um, uh, management and uh, we've got some amazing carbon, uh, carbon credit um, um, uh, opportunities. So we, we're creating a public utility technology platform that will allow everybody to use, uh, get what they need. And, and the key to that is scale. So yeah. real the, if, if the technical innovation is that I came up with um, uh, what I, I called an SQR code, a secure QR code, which is now also a slinky, a secure link. And, <laughs> okay. Um, um, tw 12 years ago, I realized that this would become ubiquitous, that smartphones would be used for payments and that QR codes would be everywhere. Yeah. And then I, re I realized that interoperability would become a problem. And that's exactly where we are today. So I created an interoperable QR code that works for everybody. I integrated it into the central bank digital currency strategy of the Bank of International Settlements and 20 of the biggest uh, central banks around the world. We ran a, a working group for about two years to design um, the taxonomy for central bank digital currency because digital money um, can really bring about massive uh, innovation. That is the great reset is digital money. Yeah. Um, because now what we'll be able to do is put um, liquidity into the hands of the people who need it. Um, most of the COVID relief, uh, probably 90 percent plus went to the banks to recapitalize their balance sheets um it didn't go to people the little bit that you know got paid as um whatever kind of government uh, assistance was mm. a, a fraction of where the where the money went um and that helped because otherwise every bank was was bankrupt and the system would have collapsed so i'm not yeah. saying it's not required but it doesn't help um, the person who's uh, now unemployed. We've got two more million unemployed people since COVID. 
Right. You know, so it, it doesn't help them. So um, with this technology, we have the ability to help them make sure that the money goes to where it's needed and also doesn't necessarily go to feed them, but let's rather pull some of it together and help them grow their own food. Yeah. So uh, in South Africa, in the last 10 years, we've spent a trillion rand on social grant payments. Okay. Uh, we're going to spend that a trillion again in the next five years. And um, it's not sustainable. It's also not smart, you know, <laughs> and we're also creating a, um, a culture of dependency. Yes. So um, here we have an opportunity to take this big, uh, it, it costs us 280 billion rand a year to run our social um, uh, welfare system. Right. Um, um, it's just impossible to sustain it. Um, and also, uh, even though it's such a big number, they get so little. So, you know. Um, yeah, governments like to talk big numbers, or oh, we're investing this yeah. and we're, we're, we're but, pumping yeah, in billions. Try, try, Try and live, try and live, you know, on 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 20, 20 pounds a month and bring up a kid, you know. So um we, we we had to come up with a with a better solution. And the technology allows us to do that. We we're tokenizing um our instruments on the Cape Town Stock Exchange. And this is a big innovation. I think we get the first serious um uh, stable coin platform to be regulated by a major exchange. Okay. Um and um, um, that's going to bring, we hope, trust and credibility to investing on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, blockchain is not um, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is just one small slither of what this kind of technology can do. There's so much more that it can do. Um, so we've designed some pretty clever instruments with smart contracts and cloud computing, which allow us to deliver technology solutions that I delivered my whole life to Fortune 500 companies. Now yeah. with smartphones, blockchain and cloud computing, I can offer the little corner store uh, um, in a township, you know, the same level of sophisticated ordering, um, the same bulk buying capacity. And uh, I can also give them some yes. advertising uh, tools that will drive their business. Um, and that's what the fourth industrial revolution yeah. is all about. So yeah, it's it's been a long journey because um, um, you know the the old rails, the old rules, are entrenched. And the thing with the financial system, um, it's a bit like I used to be in retail systems. It's the same thing. These are not systems you can switch off whilst you change things over and ask everyone to be patient. You're going to be down for a day or two. Yeah. You know this doesn't stop. Um, um, the last thing you can have in the payment space is a system that doesn't work. You know, if it doesn't work once, it's going to be game over. So it's not easy, um, um, and that took a bit of time. Yeah, uh, it took a bit of time for the technology to mature, and also um, being a, a seasoned IT uh, veteran, having um, developed many multi large systems used by thousands of people, doing billions of. Uh, dollars of transactions every year. Um, I know what it takes to do it right, and you can't uh, uh, take shortcuts. Yeah. So we 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 did this slowly, and we avoided a lot of the pitfalls that um, startups have, where shareholders are looking for a win straight um, away in six months. Yeah. You know, um, and we we're doing it right and laying the infrastructure. We're a bridge. We're we're worthless uh, until the first car can go over it, and the first car can only go over when the last uh, part of the bridge is done. So, and that's also how we funded it. Um, and I think that's a, a big part of our success and about creating a culture that extends beyond the founders yeah. is we started the, the um, Maven Investment Network, uh, which costs a thousand dollars to invest in you uh, at the moment, get 10 Mahala X tokens, which is our, our equity token for the platform that we all uh, yeah. own. And um, we've got over uh, 200 um, of the most amazing uh, mavens, people who understood the need for the platform and said, I'll put my money in. Yeah. I'm part of the cooperative and I'm going to help shape it. And in the time, it's been about three years now, uh, we've raised um, you know, several uh, million dollars. We've developed, um, we, we were running on Ethereum. We developed our own blockchain, integrated into R3. We've set up our own exchange. We've created all of the legislative framework and we've got probably 10 billion rands worth of local economic development projects that we've been right. incubating 
uh, ready to raise money on the exchanges to provide the liquidity and working capital. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, uh, poor people don't need banking, they need money. Exactly. And so to kind of translate this, I guess, a little bit for the for the 99 percent, um, you know, what what does this mean for for people's everyday lives? What what change in behavior is going to be required? Because when you talk about a lot of these things, it feels really hard and complex. The moment you talk finance, pensions, stocks and shares and most people, and this is why the banks rely on it, just go, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing because I don't get it. I don't understand it. How is this going to differ and what change of behaviours do we need? Well, you know, the, the one thing we learned um, when we uh, had to undo apartheid, um, passing the law is easy. It takes two minutes. Um, you stand and we all voted, we queued and the job was done. But it wasn't. That was just the start. We had to go into every level of society and address the inequality, change the signs, change the culture, run workshops. And that extended to government, business, churches. People had to re-examine their relationship with their domestic workers in their homes. Yeah. Um, and um, so it took, and, and in one generation, it really, it's like apartheid didn't exist. My kids don't know what I'm talking about. They're so over it. Yeah. You know, and that is that is miraculous. Um, but it's because we did it at every level of society, and the, and we're going to have to do the same thing with this. Yes, people don't understand it. We need to explain it to them. Okay. Um, um, and a big part of our role and a big part of our job is that education, um, because um, giving people money alone will not solve the problem. You need three things, and I know this because it's why I was able to be successful. I had the three things that that are needed. Um, I had the access to the education, so um, um, I, I could um, figure out and, and, and um, you know, really um, study with the best in the world. I had access to capital, but then I also had access to markets and network. So when I started in business, I already um, had exposure to business. I had a, a, a community that were buying and selling to each other and who were willing to give me the, uh, the opportunity and the mentorship. Um, because that's how it worked, and that's how it's yeah. worked for generations. And and uh, as a result, um, um, it's not that hard to be successful. Yes, you have to work hard and all of that, but yeah. everybody works hard. Um, I'm not here because I worked harder than the person who's, you know, uh, uh, the domestic worker or a factory worker, or that's that's nonsense. So um, if I knew that if we could provide those three things to everybody, then everybody will achieve their full potential. Yeah. Um, so education is critical, um, um, you know, and uh, we've got to teach people the right things. Uh, we seventy-five percent of our graduates are unemployed. Yeah, you know, um, we, it's time to re-examine uh, what we do and um, and be be smarter. I like the smart, you know, the smart city, smart money. Yeah. Um, for too long, we let the stupid people run things because we were too busy. Um, we need to be more mindful and, um, and, um, and, you know, and yeah. there are so many smart people out there. That's the other reason why I was driven with the passion to build this platform is I know there are other sunnies out there. You know, I don't want them to wait 10 years um, to yeah. do something. You know, I could have saved this country billions, you know, billions. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I think the biggest challenge, obviously, is going to be unlike the um, the apartheid that was such a a huge you know issue for South Africa that everyone was involved in, and globally there was the the insight and the pressure. It's how do we shift that balance of power from well, from you, the you big know. the big boys? You know, back to your comment about whoever holds the gold. Creates the rules. Well, I, I also believe, I think it was Winston Churchill who said this about the Americans. He said that you can always count them, count on them to do the right thing once they've exhausted all other options. <laughs> and I, I, I think that, that we, we're there. Um, we, we're out of options. We're on the okay. fiscal cliff. Um, we're like literally um, going down um, the proverbial drain uh, with a, a momentum that um, is, is, you know, potentially threatens of outbreaks of violence so the violence helped our cause because i've yeah. been telling people for 10 years there's going to be violence now they can see that you know um, once it, uh, you, you reach a certain level of hungry people um 
there's real danger. And, um, um, you know, so so that helped. And then economically, there, there are no, we're out of options. We're out of yeah. options. So, uh, and COVID also brought things forward um, because people are now ready to try things that they weren't ready to try before. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I think it's the perfect storm to do what is, um, you know, to introduce a new payment standard to the world is not something that's done very often. All of the ones that have been introduced are still around. Coins, checks, uh, credit cards, um, uh, paper money. So to introduce digital money is a big game changer. That's the fourth industrial revolution spark right there. Um, and because so many people are involved in financial transactions and everybody's paying, um, it, it was a massive, massive project. Yeah. It, took, uh, it literally took every day um, pushing this along, traveling the yeah. world, um, building a global ecosystem um, and uh, finding like-minded people to um, uh, join forces and imagine what could be possible if the next Visa and MasterCard was owned by Africans, 100 million Africans and Africans in the diaspora who were yeah. getting the dividends that um, they, their shareholders are getting and were putting that back into economic development yeah. and education. And uh, we'd start to see um, virtuous circles instead of vicious cycles. I love that, I love that. And I guess there's part of me that goes, the, 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 the challenge ahead is, is so large, the vision, is incredible and it absolutely summarized it perfectly there I think because there's so many people in this space looking at all things tokens blockchain crypto all of those things there are going to be as many sharks out there who are going to drive it for the same capitalist reasons that we've we, we drive products and growth etc so it's still going to be really scary for people to get used to that um but yes, I, I think so. I'm but, with you. <laughs> but I, I think there are other things pushing it along. Um, it was what was it, about two years ago where um, Mark Zuckerberg uh, announced um, Libra and their plans to launch a global currency. And the world went no. And for good reason, right? Now, um, why would the world trust Sunny Fisher and why should they? So yeah. that's why the concept of putting it into a cooperatively owned platform made sense. SWIFT, the, the payment network, is also a cooperative. Right. Um, you know, there's so many cooperatives around that we don't notice. Um, um, and um, uh, we, we need the highways to be free and payments and access to capital is the highway. Okay. Um, and so do you do you genuinely think for you guys now that, you're ready to jump, you're ready to take the move. And do you think you've got something here that kind of first mover and unique? Without a doubt, it's, um, um, nobody has built a global ecosystem um, like we have. And we did it with a very deliberate strategy um, over a six year period. And the strategy was around saying, um, you cannot acquire a hundred million customers one at a time in the amount of space that you need to pull this off the two sided market. Yeah. So we, we went and um, uh, created um, applications for large member organizations um, who could bring us uh, millions of people at a time. Yeah. So, for, for example, we're involved in the payment processing space in the U.S. with the African-American churches. Okay. So it gives us access to millions and, uh, of people. Um, we, we work with trade unions, um, we work with student organizations, we work with uh, churches. Um, so um, we got to 100 million uh, with a couple of large organizations. Yeah. And it was the critical mass. So that was the, the strategy. Um, and then I think the other thing is that I've, I, um, I realized early on that the central banks would be the ones who um, decided who wins here. Yeah, they're not going to like you very much. Well, that's why I decided we either if to fight with them is silly. They asked Willie Sutton, the bank robber, Willie, why do you keep robbing banks? And he said, because that's where you keep the money. So I, I decided ra rather than fight with the people who have the money, let me rather help them get what they want, um, which is a, a platform that works for them. And that ensures that we're ubiquitous. 
Um, so um, I, I, very few people um, went down that road. And uh, the, key, the key to this is to have built it and handed over to a cooperative and say, you know, this can't be owned. Uh, and then to design a, a revenue model where um, I could still um, be rewarded for my sacrifice and all the people who may help make made it happen Yeah. Um, um, at the same time. So um, I, I had a look at um, um, a whole lot of things. There's an a Open ID Foundation. When you sign up and you connect with Google or Facebook on a website, it's the Open ID Foundation that keeps everybody's keys. Yeah. And that's what we've done with For Us. We've created the smartphone version of that. So we keep wow. uh, all of your uh, sensitive data in your own vault uh, that everybody can use, and that solves the problem. Amazing. And so just two things I'd love to touch on quickly. Is One is I'm really intrigued to um, find out just a little bit more about how you're combining, because if we look at the sustainable development goals, obviously this is all going to be about diversity, inclusion, and, and kind of creating those ecosystems and opportunities. But you talked a little bit about um, the opportunities in sustainability and carbon. So could you just touch on that a little bit? Yes, yeah, so um, we, we're launching a, um, a token uh, on our exchange where uh, uh, we will fund um, the installation of renewable energy in small and medium enterprises. Um, and then um, we recover the money through the, the, the sale of the utility. So we get paid for the electricity. But yeah. what, we, what we do is we take some of that carbon saving and we sell that uh, to people who need to offset. And it's a real offset. So um, we, we believe that we'll be able to bring the cost of funding renewable energy down because we're going to be subsidizing it with, a, with the carbon credit. So all of that is managed through a smart contract right. so that we can, we can prove that um, that um, energy, uh, that carbon footprint was actually saved. Yeah. So it's those, those kind of things that we can build, build into transactions where we can do um, a, a carbon-friendly uh, financing. Um, right. And that's again, you know, it's all about incentivizing the right behavior. With the right people. Yes. Uh, another thing we're doing is, is traceability on the waste side. So uh, we have a, an app where people scan their waste and um, we give them offers, uh, you know, based on that. But we're collecting the data. Yeah. And then we, we have a whole program for um, entrepreneurs to run waste centers and uh, we've awesome. got the whole supply chain uh, you know so um blockchain and 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 having a wallet just makes all of these these kinds of things uh yeah possible because actually when you when you first said measure your waste and put a photograph I had a hideous vision of me measuring my my literal waste <laughs> um, <laughs> like no 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 one wants to see that um, but the reality is when it comes to obviously scope three analysis and that transparency and the details it's so complex that's where it allows that to, to, to play, doesn't it? Um, exactly. And I suppose if there are any potential Mavens or investors out there listening to this, or can they just go online and, and reach out? Absolutely. Um, and uh, if they can, when it, when it asks uh, on the form where they heard about it, if they can mention this, because this is how we, we do it. It's word of mouth uh, and by invitation. So uh, I have no doubt that people are li listening to this um, um, it'll resonate, um, they have a common interest. So um, they're welcome to get involved. And the thing is, it's a cooperative, it's a chance to get involved and to participate. Um, so you can actually be part of the solution. You know, um, we, we're the people who are gonna fix this, that's nobody else. Yeah. And um, um, it's quite amazing when you get together with like a uh, hundred like-minded people in the same room. Yeah. Um, it's almost like a therapy session. Um, and it is, exactly. I think it's the, it's the energy. And what I love the most about this is giving the power, the balance and the reward to the 99%. Because, you know, let's be honest, you're able to do this and the other co-founders because you've had that ability to have a career, find some gold and then, and then do it. And there's lots of family offices out there who are doing incredible things. But many people like us, we want to do this. We just don't have the capital to be able to do it. So that's what excites me the most. Yes, and, and, and talking about family offices and that, what, what's also really cool about this is it creates a secondary market for the investing. So mm -hmm. typically with startup investing or impact investing, you're putting your money in and you're not expecting a return uh, for the next 10 years, um, uh, you know, because that's how long it takes. We're here with tokens, 
you can make the investment. And if you want to invest in something else rather a bit later, you can sell your tokens. So you don't have to wait for the liquidity event and then it creates a yeah. secondary market. And that'll bring more people to this kind of in investing if you know you can get it out when you need it. Yeah, because that's one of the put off points with pensions, isn't it? Often you either can't afford to put into one or it's locked away for so long. Frankly, you might not even be alive when you can draw your pension. Um, and I think it would also, before, before we say goodbye, it would also be a miss to sort of point out that you are also supporting some incredible causes um, regionally across different sectors. We touched on education earlier um, and I'm, you know, I'm sure there's new news to come soon, but I'm delighted to, to hopefully bring that partnership with Education Africa because of the importance of educating that next generation. Well, you know, the way that we look at it with this blockchain and, and rolling out this funding, um, we, we also get the opportunity to then collect the returns um, from the finance. And um, what better way to then distribute it directly to the right things, directly into people who are doing uh, impactful education on the ground, rather than going through a government tax collection, costs money, they lose some, they steal some, it doesn't get spent properly. And you're getting like 10 cents in the rand for your, for your money. We, don't, we can't afford that. So yeah. what we've done is we've said, um, let's use this as an opportunity to help direct money um, on the blockchain without interference um, with um, uh, traceability and visibility to organizations who are actually doing it on the ground yeah. um, and who are ready for scale. Um, and we, we're busy in a couple of areas, conservation, um, education, some amazing um, community township projects where uh, people are, are mobilizing themselves. Um, and yeah, it's about, yeah, about giving people the tools to take their power back. Yeah, and you know what? When I first spoke to you and then started to look into this, I was really annoyed because I just wanted to be that. It was one of those things where you go, yes, this, more, <laughs> scale, right, let, let's go, let's go. So listen, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Sonny. I'm super grateful that you stuck it out for, for 12 years because it is going to be really hard. And you've still got a massive journey ahead of that, I've, I've no doubt. But it's incredible what you're doing, the concept behind it and also the give back to, to the masses. So thank you so, so much for joining us on the show. No, thank you. So that's it, you've made it, the show's over. Thank you for being with us. I hope you've been able to take something away, maybe solve a problem or just know you're not alone. Here's hoping it made you smile with a few laughs along the way. Please feel free to find me on all social media channels and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel just search the Rodin Morale podcast. Have an awesome day and see you next time.